Hello, you're listening to a uh, special ancillary episode of Fundamentally Flawed with myself, Alex Bottom. Uh, today I have been joined by Sight in Bruggenkate, who is a Christian apologist who will be more than familiar to anybody who's listened to the show uh, in the last few weeks. He's been on a couple of times. Uh, Sai challenged me to come back on to discuss with him a few more things, so I agreed, and we had an hour-long chat, which you'll hear in a moment. If you want to join in the discussion, you can... Uh, Go along to our website at fundamentally-flawed.com or you can tweet us at fundyflawed, which is F-U-N-D-I-E, flawed, F-L-A-W-E-D, all one word, uh, and tell us what you think. Uh, or you can join in the conversation if you want by actually joining us on the podcast. Again, just drop us a line at the website and we will happily have you on. Anyway, here's the show. Enjoy. In the beginning, man created God, and saw that it was profitable. Hello and welcome to A Fundamentally Flawed Extra. Uh, it's just myself, Alex, today, uh, joined by Saiten Bruggenkate, who has, uh, again, requested a, a rematch of sorts, I guess. Uh, so here we are. So, Sai, what is it you're wanting to say? It's not that I really requested a, a rematch. It's just that you keep um, posting stuff that I'm not answering your questions, and I just want to make it clear that you're the one who's not answering my questions. But I'm glad that you've agreed to uh, come on here since you've blocked me from your blog um, to come on here and actually answer some questions as you said you would. So I'd, I'd like to start uh, very simply by asking you, are viciously circular arguments logically invalid? Are viciously circular arguments logically invalid? Viciously circular, yes. Okay. Is it viciously circular to employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning? No. It's not? No. Can you explain why not? Because uh, we're not using our reasoning to justify our reasoning, side. That's not what I asked. I asked, is it viciously circular to employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning? And I said, no, it isn't. Yeah, but then your explanation was that you're not doing that, but that's not what yeah, I'm but asking. Then you, you. But you weren't going to, didn't you immediately try to prevent me from answering? Okay, go on. Sorry. So what I was going to say was that it's because that's not what we're doing. Uh, when we use our, our senses, we use our senses to uh, how can I word it? To experience the world around us. Now, if we had only one sense, say sight and we had no other senses, then to use only that to just to, to verify sight would be circular. However, I can back up sight with touch, I can back it up with taste, smell, I can sense heat, I can sense cold, I can sense if gravity is higher than it should be or less than it should be. Uh, there's many, many senses that I can employ. Uh, all of them are independent of each other, uh, yet will all corroborate my experience of my surroundings. Are you finished? Yeah. Okay, now can we get back to my actual question? I'm not asking what you're not doing. That's coming. I'm asking, is it viciously circular to employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning? And I've answered that question already. I've said no. Yes, but you, and I asked you why, and you gave me a non-answer. No, I gave you a reason as to why I think it isn't viciously circular. I no, no, saw, no, you're, no. I told, you're, let me finish, I, yeah. I told you that, uh, that if I was to use my reasoning to and I only had one source of input for that reasoning, then it could possibly be viciously circular. But as I'm using various different forms of, of sensory apparatus to understand my surroundings, using my reasoning to then interpret that input isn't viciously circular. Alex, I'm not asking you what you're doing. I'm not asking you how you're justifying your reasoning. I'm not asking you that. At this point, I'm simply, I'm simply asking you if it's viciously circular to employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning. You say no. Yep. I'd like to know why that is not the case. Because, as I've said, what if it... I don't, okay, you're going to have to reword the question, Sai, because I don't understand what you're trying to dig out here. Okay. Now, I'm going, I'm, later I'm going to ask you to justify your reasoning, but my simple question is, would it be viciously circular to employ your reasoning to justify your reasoning? If you had no other means of justifying... I mean, by reasoning, what do you mean, though, Sai? You're using the phrase reasoning. What do you mean by reasoning? Your ability to come to logical conclusions. Okay, and what do I need to use to, to come to those logical conclusions? What apparatus are you suggesting I use for that? Well, the thing is, that's not where we're at right now. No, it is. It's, it's, 
because you've got no, to clarify the question, Sai. If you're going to, you're I'm going not to... asking you what you're. I'm not asking what you or anybody else is using. That's not what I'm asking you. It's a very simple question. Is it viciously circular to employ reasoning to justify reasoning? I have answered that question now several times. I have said no. Yes. Okay. Why not? And I've answered that question as well. I've advised. But you haven't. I've, I've answered with the best answer I can give you, Sai. That, as far as I understand it, reasoning is what we make of what we are receiving through our senses. Okay. Uh, okay. I mean, how else would viciously... you def define reasoning in a different way? If, if that's what is you it want. viciously circular to use God to justify God? Yes. Why is that viciously circular? Because you're making a, an appeal to something that has no evidence. Okay. You what can't is the sense evidence, it. You can't what touch it. What is the it. evidence that your reasoning is valid without using your reasoning? I can compare. Well, there's there is no way to do it without using your reasoning. It's a nonsense question, sign. So then, how is that not viciously circular? It's a nonsense question. It's a, it's a, it's actual nonsense. The question. Nonsense based on which standard of reasoning, and how do you account for that standard? Based on, it's just absolute absolute circular nonsense. It's like saying. Uh, can you use blue to prove that blue is blue? Exactly. It's, it's a nonsense question. So, how is using your reasoning to justify your reasoning not a nonsense question? How is that not nonsense? So you'll have to repeat that. How is it not circular to use your reasoning to justify reasoning? But I'm not saying that I, but I don't use my reasoning to justify reasoning, Sai. Reasoning is something that I do to reach... Is conclusion. your reasoning valid? I believe my reasoning is valid. Is How do your you reasoning valid? The validity of your reasoning without using it. Is your reasoning valid, Sai? Um, well, the thing is, we're getting at we're we can get you... to my questions, your questions of myself later. But this okay. is what we're going to talk about. We weren't going to avoid questions. Okay. Are you using your reasoning to justify the validity of your reasoning? I am because I have no other tool to use. Okay. But, so, but, no, but let me just let circular? me just stop something here, though. You're saying, am I using my reasoning to valid validate my reasoning? Right. I'm using reason as a way to reach a conclusion. I'm not reasoning just to reason. See, this is where I think you're making the mistakes are. You're, you're asking me if I'm doing something to do something, which is the thing that I'm already doing. Is so everyone's building... reasoning valid? It depends on what sensory in input they've got. If they're suffering some psychotic... Uh, incident, or if they've got brain damage, or if they're uh, waking up confused from sleep, their reasoning may not be valid. Okay, so everyone's reasoning is not valid. Then no, you know I didn't say is? that. I didn't say that, Sai. I said some people's reasoning may not, and there, are, and there are certain situations where that reasoning may not be valid. It's not an all or nothing. I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm not, saying it's, I'm, not, I'm not asking an all or nothing. I'm saying, is the validity of all people's uh, is their reasoning valid of everyone? But you just said to me, I'm not asking an all or nothing. And then you ask me, is the validity of all... I'm not asking reasoning? if everybody's reasoning is valid. I'm asking you if there are some people whose reasoning is invalid. How's that? Okay, some people whose reasoning... There will be some people whose reasoning is invalid. Now, okay, that may I'm... be... Down, well, let me finish. That may okay. be down to brain injury. It may be down to not having all the information they require to make the, the correct decision. Their reasoning, though, is a tool that they use to, the reasoning sits between the input of the senses and then the cognitive function of the brain. The reasoning kind of sits between the two as far as I see it. It how is not know, in okay. itself the end point. Okay, how do you know that you're not one of those people? Well, I don't. Okay, so you do not know if your reasoning is valid then? Uh, I'm not saying that. I'm saying I don't know for certain, but then nobody does, so I don't see what... Okay, do you know for certain that no one knows for certain? No, I don't. The only way I would know that would be if I was omniscient. So how do you know that your reasoning is valid then? Again, the only way I'd be absolutely certain of that if I would be if I was omniscient. However, the reasoning that I use to arrive at conclusions based on the sensory input from my various senses that I have available to me gives me a working model of the world around me. It allows me to cross a busy road without being knocked down. It will allow me to successfully type on a keyboard. It allows me to cook a meal. It's in every single instance when I have called upon it in my entire life, it has worked every single time. I have reason based on experience to assume that it will continue to work and to assume that because it has worked that I can rely on it to a certain degree. Okay, but you do not know that your reasoning is valid, is that correct? 
No, I don't know if you listened to anything I just said. Yes, I did listen to it, but you're yeah. employing your reasoning and making that uh, uh, that assessment. No, and if reasoning... your reasoning is invalid, how do you know that when you're making that assessment that it's not an invalid conclusion? As if I said, you don't so know I... that your reasoning is valid. As I said, Sai, so the reasoning is the cognitive process between sensory input and finally making a decision and assessing the world around you. It isn't right. the end result in itself. So I think we're getting bogged down in this question. Well, not everyone's reasoning is valid, as you have admitted, and you have admitted that you don't know if, yours, if you are one of those people. However, I have, also, I have also said that in every, every single opportunity that I've had to experiment on whether my reasoning is valid in my life, you know, crossing a busy road, having to take into account various pieces of traffic coming towards me, Working out what their speed is, how quickly I think that piece of traffic will arrive with me, catching a ball, various, all the various things. It has never once failed me. So I, I have, I, let, let me finish. I have s sufficient grounds to be confident that I am reasoning correctly and that I am experiencing the world as it is. Are you using your reasoning to make that evaluation? Well, that's the point. See, I don't understand how you can't see the point that in all these evaluations you're employing your reasoning. You are presupposing that it's valid. I, right, so when, as we grow up, as we go from being infants to adults, we learn how to assess the information that's coming in through our senses. Uh, whether you want to call that our reasoning or not, we can judge that against how successful we have been at not being killed or not poisoning ourselves or not punching the boss all these different things are all checks then we also have as uh, Jim pointed out in the previous uh, discussions we also have the ability to check with our peers and with, with other human beings and seeing what they're experiencing and seeing what, what their reasoning is telling them about a situation if I'm in a group of people and the entire of that group reasons that something is happening, then it is a fair bet that my experience of that event is real. Now, it's entirely possible that everybody's having a group hallucination, but that would be something else, and that would be something that we'd have to look into to see why that had happened. But there would be an explanation for it. I mean, it wouldn't be any call to the supernatural. So I'm not quite sure what you're trying to drive at there. Well, I realize, Alex, that uh, we butt heads on this. And, you know, I know as, as much as you despise me in the blogs and stuff like that, I think in person we'd probably get along all right. But this is the key issue. This is the issue that, that you are talking about, all of these checks and balances that you're making with other people as you grow up. But you're assuming that your reasoning is valid when you do this. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm then checking that assumption against right. the reality the that I is, experience. What is your basis for assuming that it's valid when you do this? Because it works. It is because it is something that I can look at the world around me and I can see that it successfully works every day for everybody on the planet. Right. But when you do that check, Alex, you're assuming that it's valid. That's the point. Well, I have nothing else that I can do, Sai. I mean, I could be a well, brain in a jar, but I don't believe I right. am a brain in a jar. you're assuming that it's valid, but you yeah. have no basis for doing so. No, I do have a basis for doing so because it works within the model of reality that I have. But that is after you, after you make the assumption, though. That's the no, I, the, the reality existed before I started to be able to recognize patterns in it. The reality, the reality of the universe existed be when I was born. I wasn't born with fully functioning reasoning skills. I learned these skills as I got older. Uh, the universe hasn't changed. Just my How ability, do you know that? because I can look back at. Uh, I can look. I mean, that's what a nonsensical question. How do I know that? I can look back at history. I can look back at scientific results from science. I can uh, ask other people about what has happened at various times. I have learned how to reason within the reality that I am in. I have not created the reality by reasoning. Okay, let's get back to the, the key point then. The one question that I asked you was if everyone's reasoning is valid and you admitted that there are some people whose reasoning was invalid. And I asked you, how do you know that you're not one of those people? And you said that you do not know that. Mm -hmm. So logically, it follows that you cannot know that your reasoning is valid. No, no, it doesn't say that I cannot know that it. I'm saying it is possible that I'm not. I believe that I am reasoning correctly. OK, I realize that you believe this, but can mm -hmm. you know for certain that your reasoning is valid? No more than anybody else. And at the okay, same but time, but question. let me finish, Sai. I can no more know it than anyone else or know less than anyone else. Okay, I'm, in exactly the same situation. I'm in exactly the same situation as everybody else. I'm using the data that my senses feeds to my brain 
to understand the world around me. I have learned how to interpret that data through interaction with that universe around me rather than creating that universe by imagining what it's like. So oh, I, I have learned, let me finish, I have learned to reason reactively to the reality around me. So that is the answer I'm giving you on that question. Some people right. may not be able to reason correctly. Now, that may be because they have suffered some kind of brain damage. It may be because they don't have all the facts with them at the time that they need to make a rational decision. It may be that they're extremely upset about something, that we all get emotive and upset occasionally. And as we all know, that can affect reasoning. However, in this situation, I do not believe that is the case with myself. I am confident that the reality I'm experiencing is real and that the information that my senses are giving me is correct. If not, you may not even exist. Though why I would summon somebody like yourself out of my subconscious is beyond me. Okay, now Alex, that is the two-quoke fallacy to say that this is what everybody else is doing. But you have admitted that you cannot know that you're one of these people whose reasoning Sorry. is invalid. Sorry, you're saying it's a two-quoke fallacy. Well, if that's the case, tell me what evidence do you have Evidence do you have that there are other people who aren't using the same sensory apparatus to experience the world around them? Well, first of all, I agree with you that not everyone's reason oh, so you is agree. valid. Okay, so but, no, but, but that's not the question I was asking. What I realize that. I'm getting back to my question, which you no, haven't no, let asked, me, let me you ask haven't a question. yet. Let me, ans let me ask you this question. What evidence do you have that there are people who are not using their sensory apparatus in the world? I haven't made that claim. Okay, well, you're just saying it was to quote fallacy. You're saying that uh, by say me saying, well, everybody's in the same boat, you're saying that's a fallacy. Now, if you can't show that there are people who aren't in the same boat, it's not a fallacy. It's the truth. It is a fallacy to the question because it's not the question that I'm asking. But it's a statement. Of, but would you agree it's a statement of truth? What's the statement? The statement that everybody in the world has to use their sense apparatus that they have, fingers, eyes, ears, nose, taste, whatever, to experience the world around them. To experience the world, yes, I agree with that. You agree with that. So what I'm saying, and that is what I'm saying, is that everybody has to do that. So right. that isn't a fallacy then, if it's a true statement. That's not the question, though. Okay, well, ask the question again. The question was, how do you know that you're not one of these people? And I've answered that question reasoning? as well, that I am Yeah, confident. and you've said that, you've said that, well, everybody uses their reasoning. No, I have also said that I am confident with the way that I interact with the world around me that I am getting correct sensory information. Right. I am also confident that I am then using my reasoning, using my reasoning to uh, to assess that information and make decisions based upon it successfully because I can successfully navigate a staircase. I can successfully, as I've said several times already, cross a busy road without being killed. I can successfully interact with the reality around me using my senses and my reasoning. Now, that gives me a firm enough grounding to believe that what I'm experiencing, what I'm see, uh, sensing, and the reasoning I am then using is correct. Okay, but you have admitted that you cannot know that you are not one of the people whose reasoning is invalid. You've admitted that. But I have also said that I am confident that I am not. I realize that. You're confident that you're not, but you, you admitted that you cannot know for certain that you're not one of those people. And the only way that anybody could know that for certain would be if they were omniscient. Nobody is, so nobody can know for certain. How do you know that nobody is uh, omniscient? Are you saying that somebody's omniscient, sign? Yes. Okay, which human being is omniscient? I'm not saying a human being is omniscient. Oh, right. Okay. So you're saying that a person is omniscient, but that that person is not human. So I'm, I'm guessing that God is omniscient. Right. Okay. God isn't a person, though, is he, Sai? Well, yes, he is. Okay. What is God, Sai? Well, if you want my definition of God, I'll uh, yeah, go on. bring it up here. Hang on a second. God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. Okay, and where do you get that information from? I get that from Scripture. Okay. Now, the Bible, so you're saying the Bible is true because the Bible says it's true. I'm saying that the Bible is true, right. and it's a necessary precondition for intelligibility. Okay. And the Bible says it's true, yes. Okay. It would be, and the Bible says it's true. Right, so you're saying that God is a necessary uh, precondition for intelligibility. That's correct. Right. Okay. Now, you've no doubt come across this before, because I know we've mentioned this before on various blogs. Uh, I put it to you that intelligibility is impossible 
if miracles can occur. Right. So if reality can change at any moment, if a glass of water you're holding in your hand could be changed by God to wine at any moment just because he wanted to, we would now have no basis for you for assuming the uniformity of, of nature or the universe, which would mean that scientist A and scientist B could do the same experiment, but they would have no guarantee that they would get the same result. However, these scientists could do the same experiment a million times get the same result but they would still never be sure that the next time they did it they would get the same result it would make intelligibility impossible so if you believe that miracles can happen and you believe in a god that can cause miracles and that can suspend the rules of reality to cause these miracles to happen then you are in a position where the intelligibility you're arguing for becomes impossible how do you know that, Alex, since you cannot know if you're not one of those people whose okay. reasoning is not valid? Sorry. If you resort to asking me how do I know that, then mm -hmm. I will take that as a tacit admittance that uh, you are defeated in that point. No, you see, because my epistemology is that God can and does reveal some things to us such that we can know them for certain. That's my epistemology. Okay. Right, God okay. can and does reveal some things to us such that we can know them for certain. Okay. You have admitted that you cannot know if you're not one of those people okay. whose reasoning is invalid, and you make knowledge claims. Okay, and so, so when you make a knowledge claim and you admit that you cannot know if your reasoning is valid, I'd like to know how you know that. Okay, so you're saying that you can be sure that God can reveal things to you in such a way that you can be certain. That's right. However, the only way you could be certain that this God is telling you the truth and is revealing the truth to you would be if you were of the same knowledge level as that God. You, How do you know that? Because – okay, if you, I'm, really, I'm not going to continue if you're just going to keep on saying, how do you know that? Okay, I, know it's, I know it's your default answer to everything. Well, the uh, thing but is, if you let me well, finish well, what I was saying. Yeah, go on. The only way that you could be absolutely certain that that God is telling you the truth or that that God isn't a trickster God or isn't Satan or isn't Loki or isn't Thor or another God telling you something that's not true, but in such a way that you believe it to be true, would be if you yourself were omniscient and could check to make sure that he was telling you the truth. Otherwise, all you have is faith that that being has told you the truth. You don't do you have know that, Alex? You don't have anything to check it against, Sai. That's how, do you know how that? I know that. Well, what do you? What can you check the your revelation from God against? I'm do you have a second God? Claim. Well, do you have a second God that you can then check against to make sure? Alex, you are making knowledge claims. Yeah, but you're you avoiding answering it. the question here. Well, the thing is, your your question is baseless since you have no basis for your knowledge claim. No, it isn't baseless. It. How do you know that? <sighs> So See, we're, we're getting we're not, to our epistemology. I realize not, that this is frustrating. We're Alex, not but going I, to get anywhere if you just keep repeating the phrase, how do you know well, that? Well, then we might so, well just finish it. Let me ask you the question again. Mm -hmm. How, What external source of verification do you have that the revelation you claim to have received is correct? I, the revelation is self-authenticating. So it's self-authenticating. So it's a circular right. revelation. It is true because it claims it is true. No, it's true because God has revealed it in such a way that we can know for certain that yes. it's true. But the only way you can know for certain and to actually know for certain would be to be omniscient. That how is the that? only way you could do it. Now, repeating how do you know that doesn't actually answer the question. You're making a knowledge claim and you have admitted that you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid. Because you are claiming that we need to make appeals to a higher authority to be sure of anything. Right. Now, you have may receive information from this God you say and it may say i am giving you this revelation i am telling you that this is the truth now you then have no further level of authority to go to to check to make sure that what he's told you is true that's right and i don't need it either but you do because by your own well in that case i don't need further verification my and senses what? are telling me that the reality around me is real uh, and why do i need to have why do i need to have uh, another level of authority when you don't sign because the thing is you have admitted that your senses and your reasoning can be invalid you could be one of these people whose reasoning is invalid i'm telling you that god cannot be invalid so that's why you need a further level because you cannot know that you are not one of those people whose reasoning is invalid that's why you that's why you need can that. your reason can your reasoning be invalid on certain things no Right, okay. And what do you base that assertion upon? On whether or not it comports with Scripture. Okay. So, you're using your reasoning and your senses to experience Scripture, 
Yeah, uh, that's correct. You are then using the argument that we are not allowed to use our reasoning and senses to validate the reality around us. Because that's for some reason... Well, okay, well, let me put it another way then. So you would say that atheists have no grounding for knowledge. I would say that atheists do know things, but they cannot justify their knowledge claims. Well, we can justify our knowledge claims by checking the reality around us. I am perfectly satisfied that reality is real. I am perfectly satisfied with that because it allows me to react and act within that reality. As a species, it allows us to look at it, it allows us to measure reality, it allows us to alter the reality if we want. We're doing amazing things as a species now, purely because uniformity holds and as, as holds for as far back as we can check. Now, by looking deep into space, we can look back several billion years. We can see that the speed of light has held uniformly for that entire period. Uh, so because it works, I am happy to assume that that is correct. Now, that worldview doesn't then require that I believe in any gods because I can account for morality because it is something that has evolved uh, logic is something that a conscious mind comes up with to explain the uh, world around it uh, and the physical world is real so we can measure it so I don't feel the need to add anything to it so my worldview pretty much covers all I need and I don't understand why you, you feel the need to add this layer of superstition no, it's, it's not, it's not an added layer, but the thing is you have admitted that you cannot know that you are one of these people whose reasoning is invalid. Therefore, all of these knowledge claims you make, you cannot know them for certain. I have also said that I am confident that my reasoning right. is I, I understand your confidence, but people uh, who are wrong are confident too. Yeah, but Sai, the, the situation we're in is that you're making a claim. Right. You are basing it up with an appeal to a supernatural higher being. Right. I am making a claim. And I am backing it up with an appeal to the reality around me. Uh, I am confident the reality is real. Now, when Dustin was speaking to me um, a couple of weeks ago, he admitted that he agrees that reality is real. Uh, I'm guessing right. that you also agree that reality is real. So we all agree that reality is real. Right. Now, reality was real before you experienced it. Uh, and the thing is, you assumed that reality was real before you came to your belief in in god no i don't agree with that okay so before you were born you'd already decided that you needed Christ. i believe that belief in god is innate i see that's again where we disagree because you repeatedly say that you don't believe that anybody's truly an atheist that we all actually believe but we're just denying in unrighteousness you're saying what scripture says yeah scripture's wrong sorry because that isn't the case okay but you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid yeah. i've said that i'm not so let's move on from that yeah no but you said you could be <laughs> well i could be but so what you could be, but you're not? Okay, well, okay. No, I said I could be, but so what? Okay, you could be. So the question is then, if you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid, how can you know anything for certain? <sighs> how can I know anything for certain? As I've said, because I successfully interact with the world around me. Right, but you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid. So what are you saying that I'd be experiencing? Are you saying that if that is the case, I'm imagining everything that I experience? I'm not saying that at all, Alex. I'm just saying that your well, knowledge no, no. that you make, you cannot you're, justify because you're you you're one of those people. No, you, you see, you're going to have to you're going to have to explain how this would work. You're going to have to explain how uh, somebody whose reasoning may not be invalid is experiencing the world around them. I mean, are they are they just projecting the whole thing? Are they sitting gibbering in a corner somewhere, imagining the whole of reality around them? Because if they are, they've got quite the imagination. No, that's not what I'm saying, Alex. I'm saying but that, in that everybody case, what are in you this saying? world, everybody in this world can know things. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, some people suppress their only justification for knowledge. No, you see, that's God. No, see, because I do believe that you do know things, but you're very inconsistent when you make your knowledge claims because you say that you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid. No, so when you Cy, make a knowledge claim, you're contradicting yourself. No, Sai, the difference is I'm being honest. I'm saying that I don't know in some cases. Now, the fact that religion makes certainty claims is okay. one of the reasons why I believe that religion is wrong. Because the only way to be absolutely certain of everything is to be omniscient. Are you and absolutely certain of that, Alex? Okay, as I said, the only way you could be certain of everything would be if you're omniscient. Now, Are you certain of that, Alex? Okay, well, tell me a way that you could be certain of it without being omniscient. No, that's not my question. No, you're no, tell me. You're, no, you're, sorry, you're saying to me, are you sure of that? And I'm saying, okay, well, I explain it Yes, way. you have to be omniscient to know everything. Yes, I'm Okay, there you go. See, we agree. So I don't know what you're... I don't we know what point that, you're... But I'd like to know how you know it. Because it is... 
it is basic logic that you would have to be omniscient to know everything. I understand that, and I agree with that, Alex. But the thing is, you're appealing to my worldview where we can know things for sure. You can make that claim. No, but Sai, I'm saying that I'm not because your worldview is is firmly rooted in mine. (laughs) Are you certain? Absolutely certain of that. Now, I, how are I am, you certain of that I am, when you could be one of those people whose reasoning is invalid? No, Sai. I am absolutely, and I'm going to go out on a quite a long limb here, I am absolutely certain that your worldview is entirely foundationed by mine. Okay. Now, you it's were saying entirely. that you're absolutely certain of something. How can you be absolutely certain of something when you cannot know if your reasoning is valid? Sai, I've said that I cannot know, but instead of that, I'm also confident that my reasoning is valid. Right. Now, I know that it suits your argument to continue bringing it back to saying, oh, but you can't be sure, because I know that you have a certain kind of almost script you have to work through with this. But I am not going to go down that route with you. I understand okay, this that. is my bottom line. I am confident that reality is real. I acknowledge that some people's reasoning may not be correct. I do not think that I am one of them. Uh, the reason I do not think this is because I successfully uh, interact with the world around me. Uh, if I am one of the people whose reasoning isn't correct, you may be a figment of my imagination. So right. in that case, the argument is, again, pointless because I am imagining God because I'm imagining people who claim he exists. So it, it doesn't bring me any nearer to believing in God at all. Well, the thing is you have made a certain knowledge claim and yet you deny certainty. I'm just pointing out the inconsistency. No, now let I, me just ask you this one question. Does no. confidence equal certainty? Does confidence equal certainty? Of course it doesn't. Okay, so when you say that you're confident of something, yeah. you're not certain of it. No, so and, I've, and not... I've said that. And I've said I'm not certain of things because there's only one way to be certain of everything, and that's to be omniscient. However, I am confident enough, I am satisfied enough with the information that I receive from my senses and from the way I react and interact with right. the surroundings that I'm in that my reasoning and my senses are giving me as near enough correct information. Right. You're confident, but you're not certain. Yes, but the two things are not mutually exclusive. Well, the I'm thing confident, is you say you're confident, but you've made a certain claim about my worldview. I, I am confident enough. Now, I, I am certain, however, because we are all living in the same reality. How do you know that, that Alex? How, okay, well, what reality are you, are you living inside that's different to mine? No, I agree that I just... That you're okay, well, knowledge so you agree with me. So why do you default right. to saying, how do you know that? Because I can justify that. You can't. No, but I can, and I've told you why I can. You can't justify it if you can't be certain. No, I can. Well, I can justify it to my satisfaction. I can justify it to the point where I can see the world around me works. Uh, Other humans, let me finish. Other humans can justify it to the point where they can build computers and send men to the moon. If we could justify it enough to be able to do those things, I would argue that that is sufficient. Okay, so justifying things to one's own satisfaction, does that equal truth? No, but justifying things to one's satisfaction on a global scale, on a species which is well in excess of 6 billion people and has had something like 160 billion people in the entire of uh, humans' history, that is sufficient. Okay, so how about majority? The weight of the majority is that that is sufficient. The majority okay, so if the majority is, of the people believe in God and can justify it to themselves, would that mean that he no, exists? that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that the majority of people share the same experience of the reality. How do you know that? Because, well, tell me what, tell me what they don't expect. The thing is, though, you no, keep on saying that. I agree that, that they do, but you're making a knowledge claim. So you keep on saying, how do you know that? But you agree right. with me. So all you're doing is trying to pick a fight there. No, what I'm saying, Alex, is that we're getting to our epistemology, our theory of knowledge. I've told you how I can know things for certain, and you've admitted time and time again that you can't know things for certain, yet you make knowledge claims. If no, you want to ask me how I can know those things, I'll give you an answer to that question. But I'm asking how you can know these things when you cannot know that your reasoning is, inval- is knowing, valid. Knowing things for certain is impossible unless you are omniscient. How do However, you know that for certain? Well, I'm just going to go out and say that it is. I'm not going to tell you how I know that because I think it's a ridiculous question. Right, okay, God exists, and I'm not going to tell you how I know that because I think it's ridiculous to ask that question. How do no, you like your argument now? God doesn't exist, Sai. There's no evidence around us that God exists. How do you know that, Alex? Because the – well, okay, the, do you agree that the uh, Bible account of creation is literal? Yes, I do. Okay, well, the earth is much older than 6,000 years old. How do you know that, Alex? Because we have evidence – that points to that. We have How do you tree, the evidence is valid, Alex? We have tree rings that go back unbroken further than 6,000 years. 
So how do you know that? Uh, how, do you, how do you know that the evidence about those uh, trees and is valid? That that they didn't have more than one ring per year. How do you know? Because that? uniformity has held. Repeated. How do you know that? Because, well, are you telling me that? Well, are you let me ask me, you one question about. Okay, uniformity. Sorry, let me finish it. Okay. Let me say. Sorry, are you saying then that that years were shorter in the past? Are you saying that? No, I'm not were, saying that at all. Like, okay. I'm just asking well, you, if, make, you listen, make a claim. I like you to support your claim. You're making a claim that something is not as the evidence. No, I just asked you a question. No, no, you're not. You're making a claim. I'm saying that we have tree rings that can be show that the Earth is much older than the Bible claims it is. Now, you're saying that that's not the case. Now, the burden of proof is on you, then, to prove... No, no, no. no. I'm that's... not saying that's not the case, Alex. I'm saying oh, that... Oh, so you're saying you it is the case? No, I'm not saying that either. So I'm you saying that you're making a claim. Rings... I'm asking you to justify it. Okay. So have you ever seen a situation where one tree ring has not been laid down in a, in a normal growth cycle of one year? Actually, there is an article that Dustin Seegers uh, linked to that uh, showed that that was exactly the case, even with that type of tree. But you know what? It was in saplings, and then the people who said that, well, who's to say that that's the case with, ma with mature trees? So they're doing experiments on that, but it, it's, it's yeah. irrelevant to argue these things since you cannot justify your knowledge anyway about uniformity. But it, but it isn't irrelevant, Sai, because How do you know that? The, the truth claims that you make from the Bible can be tested. Okay, Alex. We can say, do you believe, um, do you believe Adam lived to be uh, 930 years old? Yes. What evidence do you have of that? Scripture. Okay, do you have any external evidence? I, I don't need any. Okay, so you're saying that you don't actually need any evidence beyond a book that was written uh, 7,000 years ago. Here's a question for you. All right. When was, uh, when was Genesis written? I, I, don't, I don't know the exact date, Alex. Well, who was it written by? I, it was written by Moses. Okay. Uh, did he write the entire first five books of the Bible? I'm not. I'm not about to to discuss. No, I'm asking you questions, Sai. No, Sai, you're asking me to discuss my. Yes, I believe he did. Okay, so you believe he did, right? Okay, so given that in uh, Genesis fourteen fourteen, uh, the verse says, "And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, three hundred and eighteen, and pursued them unto Dan." Okay. However, Dan didn't become. That the city of Dan wasn't actually called Dan till after the time of Joshua. How do you know that, Alex? Uh, Judges uh, eighteen twenty-seven, and they. Yeah, but the thing is, you're let making. Me finish. Finish. Oh, let me yep. read this out, mm -hmm. so, so the listeners can hear. Judges eighteen twenty-seven, and they took the things which Micah had made and the priests which he had, and came to Leash, to a people who were at quiet, who were at quiet and secure, and they smote them with the edge of the sword and burned the city with fire. Judges 1828. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lies by Bethrohob and they built a city and dwelleth therein. Judges 1829. And they called the name of the city Dan after right. the name of Dan of their father who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laash in the first place. Now, Dan wasn't named that till well after the time of Moses. So your claim that uh, Moses wrote the uh, first five books of the Bible is demonstrably untrue, just using the Bible. Are you certain that that's ir irreconcilable? Uh, well, Alex? I tell you what, I'll let you go away and find out if you can reconcile that. No, I'm, I'm asking you, are you certain that that's yes. irreconcilable? Yes. Are you certain of that? Yes. Okay, how can you be certain of that when you can't know that your reasoning is invalid? It's valid. <sighs> I can read, Dan. See, because the thing is, just because that, you know, the, uh, the city was named after, if that's the case, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't looked into this, but surely somebody could call a place that is going to be named something based on revelation from God. I mean, that's a very simple oh. thing. Oh, but come thing on. Is, that, it can be that, reconciled that's... based on our presuppositions, but that's... you're telling me that, that you're that's... certain that it's irreconcilable when that's you can't account for certain. That's remarkable special pleading there, that they were revealed to them that it would be later called Dan. Now, that's weak by, by almost anybody's well, I don't know. I don't know the reconciliation, uh, but I'm saying uh, that that's a possibility. Okay, here's another point. I mean, do you... no, 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 the thing is, we will look at these things subject to our respective presuppositions. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm but saying that you is, can't account for certainty. So when you make an objection, you're appealing to absolute laws of logic, first of all, which you cannot account for. No, what I'm also doing, Sai, is I'm pointing out that the argument, that the book that you use to build your argument is actually riddled with error and cannot be trusted. Okay. Building. Are you saying that they're contradictions? Well, I'm saying that if the books were written by Moses, then they would not have the name of a city that wasn't named till long after. How do you know that? Because why would it have that? Why would God do that? Why not? <laughs> because it would, if he put it in, which, it, if it, okay, well, let's say for sake of argument that God has put that in. 
God has given readers of the Bible something that gives the indication that what the Bible says isn't actually true. Because it, it give that indication to me, Alex. Okay, well, it's giving an indication that it's the Bible makes the claim for itself that uh, Moses wrote the first five books of it. Um, it then dates the naming of a city to long after his death, which is going to give doubt. However, I mean, that's not the only problem with that. Moses I mean, also wrote God. about, uh, about uh, Jesus. I mean, Jesus, no, well, it, uh, he, it doesn't. he referred to the teaching of Moses when he talked, of, when he talked about himself. So, I mean, you're going to say, how could Moses know about Jesus? Well, it's, Jesus, the Bible is written by revelation. Yeah, but the thing is, the Old Testament doesn't mention Jesus by name. It mentions somebody called Emmanuel, which wasn't Jesus' name, sorry. Well, the thing is, I mean, the thing I mean, is, that's, that's why I don't discuss Scripture with those who don't hold it authority. I, you see, and that's you the thing. These things it, until you no, repent. No, you see, the thing is, I used to believe, so I actually know my Scripture. Okay, let me ask and you this question. This is, this is something that came up in a podcast with Eric and myself. Okay. You said that you used to be a Christian. Yes. Now, what is the ultimate authority of the Christian? Is it their own reasoning, or is it the Word of God? It's the Word of God. Okay. Now, let me ask you this question. How do you reason from a position where God is the ultimate authority to a position where you are? By realizing that the ultimate authority of God doesn't actually exist. Okay, but when you reason out of that position, are you acknowledging that you are always your own ultimate authority? I am saying that I am the ultimate arbiter of what I decide to do and what I decide to believe. However, right. I'm not the ultimate authority. Uh, I am not the ultimate authority, for example, on uh, evolutionary biology. I However, am not the ultimate you out authority. Of Christianity, you were the ultimate authority of your reason. No, I was the ultimate authority of whether I decided that God existed or not. I right. decided now, based. Now the thing is, Si, I decided based on the Bible alone that I didn't believe in God. Okay, but you were the authority. You rested on your reasoning rather than on what Scripture because, told you. Because as soon as God was out of the picture, I had no one else's authority to rest on in that situation. It was a personal. At that point, it's a personal choice whether you believe or not. Uh, you have admitted that God and his word is the ultimate authority of the Christian, and now you admit that you, or something other than God, is the ultimate authority. I'd like to know how you reason from the position that God is the ultimate authority to the position that something else is. I've answered what I'm that saying question. Is, what I'm saying is that if, you, if, if God was your ultimate authority of your reason, you cannot reason from that position. It's impossible. No, Just like I, it says in 1 John 2, 19, those who left us were never among us. Because but, you or I something understand. other than God was the ultimate authority of your reasoning when you left Christianity. Yes, I, the, the no true Scotsman argument isn't going to work. I believed and I was, a, I was a genuine believer. However, as I grew older and as I looked further into it, I realized there were certain things in the Bible that just did not add up. I saw numerous contradictions. I read into it and discovered that various things were not written when they claimed to have been written. Uh, I think partly what got me going was uh, finding out that the high priest in Jerusalem didn't actually have authority in Damascus. You understand so, that uh, you are the authority. Yeah, let me of finish your... what I was saying. Mm -hmm. the, the reason that the thing that got me started was realizing that Paul, when he writes of being converted on the road to Damascus, was lying about his reason for going. Because he, the high priest of, of Jerusalem didn't have authority in Damascus. So Paul could not go there under authority of the high priest to persecute the nascent church in Damascus. He would have had no authority to do so. It's like sending a hall mon monitor from one school to another. They'll just be laughed out of the building if they say stop running. So things like that got me thinking and thinking, well, what's going on here? And I read further into it and I realized that God does not exist. Now, once you've taken the person that you previously saw as, a, as an ultimate authority and you realize that that being does not exist, you then have to decide how you're going to proceed. Uh, I proceeded to then just get on with my life. And then so the make truth of scripture was based on your reasoning? The truth of scripture was based on my reasoning? Yes. As in when I believed or when I stopped believing? Well, you evaluated Scripture, and you decided whether or not it was true. Okay, which is what you did, Sai. Well, that is that. You see, the difference is the only difference is again. No, the only difference is Sai. No, the only difference is Sai is that that we both evaluated Scripture. We both, for a period, thought it was true, and I realized that it wasn't. You're still in the situation where you think it is. Now, let's put this in pers into perspective. You believe in talking snakes. You believe in talking asses. Right. You believe that there was a global flood less than 10,000 years ago. Right. You believe that there's no such thing as evolution. 
right. you believe... Well, not macroevolution, right? Okay. Do you, What's the difference between macroevolution and... and well, macroevolution? I'm not going to get into the finer details. Just continue your point. Okay. See, these are the things you believe. You believe in demons. You believe in spirits. You believe that right. a supernatural, all-powerful being can control and alter reality to whim. It's the 21st century, side, and you believe these things. That's correct. Now... This is why I, I eventually decided to stop talking to you on my blog because I suddenly had a, a, a moment of clarity that discussing these things is almost enabling somebody to believe delusion. Um, you believe something that's absurd. Absurd you, based on what absolute standard of logic you have yourself to you understand. You argue yourself into a position where you think you can prove to yourself that it's true. Uh, Okay, my earlier uh, point, though, was, Alex, that these things I believe, and yes, on the surface, they don't seem to make sense. No, they don't. man who was dead for three days came back to life. Why do I believe them? Because I am not the authority of my reasoning. God is. Yeah, and the point you, you that I was making is that when you stop believing in them, that you were the authority of your reasoning, you were always the authority because you were the one who evaluated whether it was true or not based on you being the authority. And I'm saying it's impossible to reason from God being the authority to you being the authority. Because since God is my authority, when things don't make sense to me, I'd lean not on my own understanding and all my ways I acknowledge him and he will make my path straight. That's for Proverbs yes, three. But the thing is, what you're doing there is you're actually using your reasoning and your own authority to then come to a decision. Now, you may be able to, in your mind... Those things I don't understand. Let me finish. You may be able to, in your mind, shunt that off onto a, an all-knowing, invisible super being. But the fact of the matter is, from from my position as an outsider, looking into what you're doing, you are using exactly the same uh, faculties as I have to make reason. Now, you're making a faulty assumption based on what you're reasoning, but you are still using the same tools as I am. Uh, the thing is, you use no. Let me finish. You use most of them successfully all the time because you you don't trust a god when you cross the road. You trust that reality holds and that uniformity holds, and you cross the road based on that. Uh, most of the time, you live within my worldview, uh, but for some reason, and I think it's because of the need for I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, I think maybe with Christians, it comes down to a fear of death. I think that the need to believe that there must be something more leads people to tie themselves into all sorts of absurd uh, faux logical knots. Uh, and it, I, I, okay. I, I mean, looking from the outside, it's, it's really quite baffling because once you've realized that it's not true, it's incredibly clear that it's not true. It's incredibly okay. clear that there's, there's no evidence to support it and there's massive, masses of evidence to contradict it. Uh, you know, I think partly that your refusal to discuss uh, scripture with people who don't hold it authoritative is because maybe it's a weak point for you, or maybe you can afford it. No, it's that... because we have uh, separate presuppositions that we're going to come to a conclusion based on our presuppositions. But several times in this last uh, little comment there, you said mm -hmm. that things were not true, things were faulty, things were absurd. Yeah. Now, I asked this question of Jim in the last podcast, and I never got a chance to uh, ask you this question. But what is truth in your worldview, Alex? I don't know. You don't know. So then how can you say that scripture is not true if you don't know what truth is? The I don't know what ultimate truth is. Because how I don't can you know say scripture is not because true. Because I don't know that such a thing exists. Now I can tell whether something is true or not by comparing it. Now I could have uh, in front of me I have a uh, three quarters full bottle of Pepsi Max. Right. If I drank that and finished it, I would know that it was true, that it was empty, and that to claim it was full would not be true. However, I would have to uh, qualify that by saying it was empty of Pepsi Max. Uh, it is, in fact, then full of air. Uh, so if I said it is now empty of Pepsi Max, that would be true if the bottle was then empty. So we can compare certain things and we can say, yes, that is true, that is not true. We can compare what the Bible says about the age of the earth or the flood or evolution which it says nothing about, and we can say, well, the evidence does not back that up. The evidence for evolution is, ex is overwhelming. Uh, to answer the question that you didn't really want to go into, there is well, no difference I mean, you never answered my, my question no, about Let me finish. Truth. Sorry. Yeah, to, answer, to answer the question you, you didn't want to answer, I'll answer it for you. There is no difference between micro and macro evolution apart from time. That is the well, only difference. The two things are exactly the same. If you be is that believe true, in, Alan? Yes. Okay, now you said that you do not know what truth is, so how can you know what's true? I have said that I do not know what ultimate truth is, but that I can okay, hold what certain is, what, things what, to be what true. What truth are you talking about then, if it's not ultimate truth? Are you Sorry. talking about relative truth? I can compare two things 
and I can see which one m most correctly conforms to reality. Uh, okay, so you're so, saying that truth is that which conforms to reality. Is no, that I'm saying that we can measure whether something is empty or full of a certain substance. We can you don't measure... know what truth is. Why do you keep using the term? Right. If we're just going to... I mean, this again, this is what you do, Sai. You, you don't accept the answers that people are giving you. And you don't... That's right. I don't accept when you say that you can't know what truth is. And you can't... I'm just okay. being honest with you, Sai. And, and, Let me just I'm, ask you one more point then. You talk about uniformity quite often. How do you know that the uh, nature will be uniform five seconds from now? Uh, because it was five seconds ago. And it has okay. held for as long as, as time has been, has been measured. Do you, do you not see a problem there projecting past observation into the future? None whatsoever. On the, what basis do you the, in assume... Fact, in fact, one of the successes of my worldview is its predictive power. Okay, let me ask you this question then, Alex. Would it make sense for me to say that I'm never going to die because I've never died in the past? No, because you've got evidence of people around you dying. However... I, I've got yeah, evidence that yeah. lots of people have yeah. died, but I have no evidence that I've died. Well, that's it. I mean, and actually, I've said this to other people. It is entirely possible, though I have you know, I have nothing to back this up, but it, it is entirely possible that consciousness is a side effect of a quantum wave moving through time. It may be, from your perspective, that you may never die. You may no, I'm not saying my physical body. My yeah, physical no, that, no, that's what I'm saying. No, this, is, no, no, this is what I'm saying. Now, it is entirely possible that quantum immortality holds. Now, if that's the case, then it would be possible that for, if you think back over your life at all the instances when you could have been killed in an accident, if the, uh, if the kind of multiverse theory of you know, that anything that can happen does happen is right, then at all those instances when you could have been killed, you have been killed. But your consciousness has continued in the version of reality where you weren't killed. So it is entirely possible, if you Google quantum immortality, look it up on Wikipedia, which isn't the, the greatest source, but will give you a bit of a flavor of it, it is entirely possible that from your perspective, you might not die. Now, It makes sense to you to say that I will not die because I have not died. That from my sense. perspective, you will die. I can't speak right, from but the my thing is, perspective. From, from the what argument is that you're saying that nature will be uniform because it has been uniform. Yes. So for me to say I will not die because I have not died, that is a valid argument. If you don't die then there will be a naturalistic explanation as to why you've not died. Okay, I or think there'll it's be something clear weird going on, on with that. Now, now, you appeal to logic quite often, um, and you say that logic is a construct of man. Is that correct? Yes, it's a construct of a conscious mind, yes. Okay, could the universe have both existed and not existed at the same time and in the same way before man constructed the law of non-contradiction? The universe existed before man came along altogether. The two things are completely separate. It doesn't. The, the logic is just a way we, we describe things around us. It's just a way that we build models so that we understand what's going on. It doesn't actually affect whether the universe is here or not, so the, the question is irrelevant. Okay, so you're, you're saying that you... You don't know if the universe could have both existed? You're saying it's an irrelevant question? No, I'm saying the universe exists. Right. Could so it have you, both existed is, and not existed before yeah. man created logic? It, but it existed. Something can't exist and not exist at the same time. Why not? If man created logic before man was uh, around? Because why logic it? is just language you use to describe things that we can see as being so Okay, so that you're saying that logic is descriptive? Yes. Descriptive of nature. It describes what we see around us in such a way okay. that it can then make sense of it. Now, let me ask you this question: Is constant change a um, uh, is constant change a um, constituent of the universe? Is constant change a constituent of the universe? I don't know. Yes, you don't know. You don't know if the universe is constantly changing. No, I don't, because I'm not okay. omniscient, so I don't know. No, but the thing is, you just said that from, the laws of logic are a constituent from, of the universe, and you can know that. From my perspective, now the the universe and your in inverted commas, laws of logic are separate things. Your laws of logic are abstracts that we use in language to describe the reality around us. The reality will continue to be what it is, whether those laws are invented or not. The universe happily went on for the, the greater part of its existence so far without us. I mean, our planets may be just over a third of the age of the universe. We've been on it for one twenty thousandth of the age of the planet. Uh, so for that, the, the tiny, tiny little period of time that we've existed as a species doesn't make any difference to the reality of the universe that continued just to churn on quite happily without us beforehand. We'll be gone. In a million years' time, there won't be any humans at all because we will either be extinct or we will have evolved to something else. The laws Is the of reality what, around us changing? The reality around us changing, well, reality will always change, but I can't say that that is a, an overall uh, 
Right. Okay. But you're saying that that logic is based on the reality around us, and now you're saying that the reality around us is constantly changing. No. Why doesn't logic change? I am saying that logic is what we use in language to describe certain things that appear unchanging. Now, uh, I'm not a philosopher. I'm not trained in philosophy, so I'm not going to you know drag myself into a conversation about logic where there are other people who are far more trained and far more capable than I. Uh, I will only give it you as I see it. And I see it in that uh, reality, from my perspective, changes. That is a, a standard And logic reality. is based on reality. Based on my experience of reality. It's not based on right. logic. It's just based on my experience of reality. Logic right, which is constantly it. changing. Reality is constantly changing, but that's completely right. separate to logic. Yeah. Okay. Logic is based on the reality of the things around us. The reality of the things around us is constantly changing. No. And yet logic does not change. See, there is certain problem. No, but si, the, the no, but si, no, but there are certain things within the, the physical universe that don't change. Give there, me an are example, certain, there are certain physical constants, like the Give speed of light. Give me an example light. of something physical in the universe that does not change. Please. Speed of light. That does not change? The maximum speed of light in a vacuum is a constant. Is that a physical thing, Alex? That is a measurable effect within the universe. But you said physical things it's, within well, the universe. Well, it is. I mean, technically, change. technically, are you saying that light isn't a physical thing, Sonny? No, you're saying the speed of light does not well, the, change. The, 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 that's how fast a particle of light will Is travel. Is the speed of your car a physical thing, Alex? That's not the same thing, Si. We're talking about the speed of light. Right. Now, the you speed of physical light... things in this universe do not change. I'd like to have no, an example. No, I'm saying that some things don't. And some things yeah, you do said now... there's some physical no, things that do not change. They, they are, there are laws of physics. The physics of the universe... There are certain things. Now, again, I'm not a physicist, so I'm not going to get dragged into something where I'll say something and you'll go, ha, ha, you don't know what you're talking about. There are certain things that are constants within the universe. Now, right. those things, as far as we have seen so far, have not changed. That's not to say they won't change or okay, that they great. can't change. Okay, but, fantastic. again, they are separate from laws of logic. Logic is entirely uh, conceptual. It is not... It is it is descriptor of reality. It is not reality itself. Right. It's a description of reality which constantly changes. It's a description of reality that we use to describe things that we observe not changing. Okay. What do we observe not changing, Alex? I just said the speed of light. Okay, but you said physical things that don't change. Yeah, the speed speed of light is. Now, what, what basis do you assume that the Sorry. speed of light Sorry. won't change five seconds from now? Uh, because over the last thirteen and a half billion years, it hasn't changed. Okay. Now, you do not see that you're begging the question there. You're saying that things no, will not, not because fact, they have not? No, but the thing, actually, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm actually pointing out one of the strengths of my worldview is that its predictive qualities are very, very successful. We can predict what something will do with a very high degree of accuracy based on what has happened in the past. But you assume uniformity, which you can account for. No, but I can account for uniformity. Uniformity is a side effect of the physical constants of our universe. Uniformity, you're, you're making it out as if uniformity is something, sort of this big deal. Uniformity is just what happens when reality exists, as far as we can see in the version of reality that we currently live in. If our universe was slightly different, different laws of physics may apply. If uh, various different physical constants were different within our universe, then the speed of light might be different, uh, you know, various things could be different. But in the reality that we're in, the reality that we can experience, the uniformity is just the status quo. That's just what happens. Now, things can change over time. We haven't, there's certain things that we haven't witnessed changing over time, and we can say with an extremely high degree of confidence that they haven't changed uh, by measuring something, how far something is from us, then measuring, you know, effectively triangulating with something else that we know how far that is, seeing how long it would take. For example, how long it would take the light from a supernova to reach a, a gas cloud nearby, uh, and it reached it to within practically the second of when we said it would do it, uh, over the distance that we predicted. Right. Is You're it. assuming uniformity, but, which you can't yeah. account for. But no, I'm. But I don't have to account for uniformity. Uniformity just exists. Uniformity. Okay, is just... God just exists. I don't have to count for God. How's that? No, but uniformity. But the thing is, you're bringing God into the argument when there's no need for him because. Well, you're, yeah, I think there is a need for it because you're saying uniformity is uniform and that's just the way it is. No, but, and I'm saying that you can't account for that according to your but, worldview since there's you, things that are constantly changing but, and things that stay the same. But si, you can't reconcile the si, two. Do you disagree that uniformity is uniform? Not at all. Okay, then. So, you, again, you're, you're, making, you're making an argument for no reason. You actually no, I'm saying that I can account worldview. for it. You can't. The more we go on, it seems to me, the more and more I'm realizing that you actually borrow a large amount from, from my worldview. Well, you have no justification for anything you've said yet today. No, but I feel I have, and I think I've, I've justified it quite adequately. Well, you have said that you cannot know that you're certain. 
So anything you've said, you're borrowing from my world. You've I've my said world certainty. I've said that uh, I cannot know for certain that I'm certain. That doesn't mean that I don't know, and it doesn't okay. mean that I can't then act. I can't then move successfully within the reality I'm in. Right. Even if I'm right. even okay. Let's let's break it down. Even if I was a head in a bucket, mm-hmm. I am successfully operating within the reality that it's providing me whatever my stimul- whatever sense information is coming to me so the reality that i am experiencing is even if it was not real is as real to reality as, as close to reality as makes no difference from okay, my now you brought that term up a number of times successfully yes and in a previous podcast you said that you don't have any goals goals as in in what way well, the you thing know, is, have... when, when you say something that operates successfully, you have to know what the proper goal is. Well, no, Otherwise, you wouldn't know if it was successful. You wouldn't know if it was working. No, exactly. For instance, if I had a cigarette lighter and I used it as a doorstop, I could say, yes, it's working, but there's no fluid in it. Yeah, the but... thing is, if you don't know the proper goal, you can't know if it's working properly. That's fascinating. So you're saying that you have no goals. How can you know That's if anything is working absolutely properly? Absolutely fallacious. That, uh, I mean, my, my only goal as a living entity is to continue living. Okay, is that the proper goal? If there's no such thing as a proper goal. It's just How do you know that? Because there is nothing to say you must do this or you must do that. How do you know that? Because Look, if you're going to say you, how do you know that again, then we can't get any further. Well, the thing is you're making knowledge claims, Alex. Yes, so I am. I don't yeah. understand why you don't understand why that's a valid question. When you I am knowledge making claims. Logic, knowledge, knowledge claims based on my experience of reality, which can be then, as I've said numerous times But now, you're fallible. Been, but so are you. So is everybody. And I know you're going to say, oh, that's such a quote fallacy. But it's the truth. Everybody's in the same situation with that. It doesn't make any difference. I mean, the thing is, you're fallible. You could be misreading your revelation to be from God. And it might be from Satan. You have no way of knowing for certain unless you know you're that? omniscient. Because you would have to be omniscient to know. See, you're making a certain knowledge claim when you say that you cannot know anything for certain. Well, do you agree that – so are you saying that you wouldn't need to be omniscient to know for certain? That's right. I'm saying that exactly. I'm exactly okay. saying that. So you're saying that you will trust on the word of it a being that appears to you and tells you something is the case, and you will take that on trust without checking it against anything else? No. What I'm saying is that God can and has revealed some no. things to us, such okay. that can know for certain. You are saying then that a God or a being of sufficient power or ability or knowledge or strength or whatever could reveal things to you in such a way that you would be convinced that it was true yet you would not check against anything else to make sure the information you had been given by that being was correct no, I'm saying that uh, God is my authority so I don't to have clarify, to check what... to clarify Pardon? I'll repeat again mm-hmm. you are saying that you will accept on faith the word of a being you believe to be all powerful without checking to make sure that being is telling you the truth I'm saying that he reveals it to us such that we can know it for certain. That's what I'm saying. So I'm I, saying there's no reason to check that. Okay. And I'm saying that everything in reality comports with that because no. when, when Scripture says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ, I know that I have to start with God in order to know anything for okay. certain. See, I'm and saying you, that. on the other hand, make certain knowledge claims and can't justify them, which has been abundantly clear in this podcast. No, I don't think so. Now, you see, this thing – so I, I'm trying to think of a way of rewording this so that I'll actually get a straight answer from you. Mm-hmm. Yes or no? You will accept the word of a being that appears to you and tells you that it is telling the truth without checking, yes or no? Yes. Okay, well, there we go. I think that's all we need to know. And I think on that note, I will thank you. I mean, it's been far more than the the half an hour I was initially intending to to spend. But I appreciate you giving me a straight answer there, Si. Not a problem, Alex. Okay, and on that bombshell.